So in this video, I'll be talking about my favorite, my absolute favorite part of drawing, and that is the inking in process. Right here in front of me, I've got a completed ink outline of this bitter melon vine that was quite happy when I started, but now is quite wilted. Luckily, I've got the outline in front of me. And what I'll be doing is basically coloring it in. Now, coloring in something like this for the most part is quite a meditative and flowing process, but I've got a few ground rules when it comes to inking in my drawings because with ink, you can't really erase it once it's on paper. So it's good to have a few rules in place to make sure you can avoid as many mistakes as possible. The first ground rule that I have is that when it comes to smaller kind of um, parts of the drawing, such as say this kind of long thing here, I know the temptation, at least for me, is to just go in there and use my fattest Sharpie or permanent marker and ink it all out. But I'm very conscious that sometimes things can go out of the borders and because my favorite type of paper to use is printing paper. If I use something as big as this on printing paper, it will bleed. So that is my first ground rule is to use for the um, borders of what I'll be inking in a small refined ink pen that I know it will stay constrained within its borders. So I'll just do that for this little thing here to get it out of the way. So that's one tight curve that's been set out of mind. And the second thing is, once you do have the big guns out, and I'm happy to use that on a big tract over here, you want to keep what you're drawing in your line of sight. You really don't want to be having your hand in front drawing something that you can't see. And because I'm right-handed, if I drew something here, I wouldn't be able to see something that is directly underneath it or to the right of it. That would be my blind spot. So it's good to work from right to left for me so I can see what's going on. And luckily, because this piece is so small, it's so movable. Sometimes I don't want to work from right to left. It's not that interesting. I want to start on the most interesting part, which is this complicated bit of white space here. But luckily, I can just move the piece of paper. So I should start off from the right to the left. But if I get stuck in here and I want to, I want to really do this line here, then I'll just flip the paper around and do that. So that's rule two. But I'll stick to ground rule one. And before I jump into my big Sharpie, I will start with my small Muji pen and I'll just get these sharp parts of the border out of the way. And it just has to be a little bit of a bleed layer because I know that will be safe. And when it comes to inking in, you can, you can ink in however you'd like. Sometimes if I'm feeling very organized, I will just ink in everything with my small pen. And then at the very end, the most satisfying part will be using the big pen to fill in everything in the center. But because I'm a little bit impatient and I like to see results, then I usually just do little segments one by one with the small pen. And then I'll jump in with my big marker so I can see what's happening. So that's one segment filled out in this bit melon leaf. And now I will use this to go inside. And also make sure that you've got a piece of paper underneath that you're willing to sacrifice if you're using printer paper like me, because it will bleed underneath. So here we go. So I'm just hugging this left line here. And then when it strays over to the right, I'll turn it around. I 
just so I can see what's going on. And there is the first segment done. And I'm really pleased with that because the way it is, I can see the blossoming of the white space in, in between. And I'll know that that white unbroken line will come to fruition very soon. So here I'll go again, just with that little bleed layer with my small pen. And I'll do a couple just on the left side because I can flip the paper over later on. And sometimes when it comes to making the ink outline, you can see I've been a little bit generous with the white space in between. Now with the inking, I have a little bit more of an opportunity to just go in there, make those veins slightly more smooth and slightly tighter. Here's that paper flip so I can focus still on what's left of my right hand. Inking really is my favorite part of drawing because it's just so relaxing. Because you've done all this hard work, you've captured a difficult 3D object in front of you and made it into something beautiful, 2D and recognizable. You've created this very clean outline. And once you've got that ink outline, you've practically got yourself your own personal coloring in book. And it's tailored in just on what you'd like to draw. And once you've got that ink outline and you start to color it in, then you don't really have to think about much because look at all these guides you've already left for yourself. Your brain's already done all that hard work. All you have to do now is gently color it in. And there's so much satisfaction that comes from this process. At the beginning, when I first started drawing, to be honest, I used to find coloring in and inking one of the most frustrating elements because Unless you've got something on Photoshop that you can fill in with an instant, it, it takes time. You have to slow down. But once I started to really get into it, then it really is my favorite part of the process because that's how the drawing blooms beneath your fingers. You're bringing it to life. And something that looks like this with just a bit of a border will suddenly become a real thing. Oh, one more. So here are a few completed segments with my small pen. And now let's bring it to life.
And look, what I've got over here is a part that I've just forgotten to do my fine ink um, outline on. And I was just about to color it in with my big marker, but I've stopped myself because it's just such a habit, I suppose, to only color in when there is a small pen outline. So that's the other way you can do it, is that you can start off in the middle with the big pen and grow outer most more to the edges and then afterwards leave a bit of a white buffer to be filled in with a smaller pen. But it does take a little bit more work because I'm quite conservative. I leave quite a lot of white space, which would be better, of course, filled in with this once there's that bleed buffer zone. But this one's all safe and can be filled in. So I'll just continue to shade this part of the leaf. And while I do it, I can just see how the contrast is starting to really bloom. Not only can you see the shape of the leaf and the character of the veins that go in it, but you can also start to see the rewards of your long-term strategy. For example, this leaf that's underneath, the, the topmost leaf, you can see the order and the reality in which things are. Sometimes when I first complete a pencil outline, it's got so much detail and annotations because it keeps me anchored to where I am. And then when I reduce that to an ink outline, then a lot of that detail can sometimes get lost and I feel a little bit despondent and I think, what happened to the richness of the image I was creating? But here is that chance to build it back up again. And not only that, it's just so clean. There aren't multiple lines or multiple things that you were setting down on paper. There's just this one bold capturing of what you've got in front of you. And the plus side on top of that is that it's much easier to take photos of. If you've ever tried graphite or pencil drawings, I think one of the most frustrating elements is that once you take a photo of it, it's all washed out no matter how rich and luscious the beautiful original is, digitally, it's just gray. There's not that much contrast. But with ink, once you've got this ink body in, then it really stands out. And in some cases, or many cases for me, I think the photo is better than the original. Because as, as you can see, I like to use pretty ordinary everyday things for my artwork. And one of the limitations of that is that it can leave a little bit of a different color on the paper. And I don't really mind, but it is noticeable. But once you take a photo of that, then all that disappears and all you've got left is this beautiful, rich, uniform black against white.
So I'll keep inking along in this way, keeping true to those ground rules one and two, which are to try and use a smaller pen for the outlines and the edges and to keep what you're inking in in the line of your view. And eventually, once this drawing is done, then it will spread out and it will be pretty much like this leaf duplicated amongst all these other ones here. And just to give you an idea of what I think or what I'm hoping the final outcome will be like, this is a similar drawing that I've done previously with pumpkin leaves and it's in the same style. So here you can see I've also used white space to indicate the fold of the leaves, the veins, as well as the priority. So you can tell that this leaf is on top of this one and that this leaf is on top of this vine. And all these leaves really are on top of the vine. So that is what I'm hoping this final um, picture will look like. But this is only one of many techniques that you can use when you're using ink to draw things. It is my favourite, admittedly, but I'll show you a sneak peek of the other types of techniques that can be done. And I've got a couple in my book about fruit and vegetables. So the pumpkin that's shown here is featured. on page 174. And here's also the pumpkin itself. But what I'm drawing here, which is this bitter melon leaf, I've captured a very small snippet of it here on page 43. So that's the actual bitter melon. That's the big version of this tiny bitter melon that you can see here. And here is one completed leaf with a lot more veins and a lot more hard work, but still the same thing. But other things you can use when you're doing your drawing, besides using negative space and inking, are, for example, for things that are a little bit more intricate and that require a little bit more nuance, then I've got dots here, or pontillism, and that really brings out the shine of the chilies and shows that some creases inside the chili fruit are a little bit deeper than others and then some ridges really stand out and catch the light. And of course I do use white space or negative space pretty often when it comes to leaves. But when it comes to round things then you may want to use ways to show a little bit more of a gradient and on top of using dots and pontillism, try and use a little bit of a shading technique. Use material in unusual ways and get a little bit of a grey that can just suggest a little bit more. So that brings me to the end of my tips about inking in and I hope you've enjoyed inking in as much as I have and in the next video I'll talk about the heart of my drawing and that will involve showing some of my originals and some of my secrets when it comes to using everyday items. <laughs>